So you're probably wondering how many items we should negotiate our order down to and how we can do this with the supplier successfully. That's a great question and one that we're going to dive into immediately and give you the answer to. I'd call this the best negotiation strategy. I'm going to teach you to become a true master of negotiation with your suppliers. So the initial objective with our negotiation strategy is quite simply to lower the required investment that the supplier is requesting from us. The reason we avoid ordering at the MOQ is because we're simply looking to de-risk our business. And initially, we only want to buy real market data that will give us an indication as to exactly how many units we can sell in a month. Now, this, of course, will change over time. And at that point, we will happily order at MOQ once we've established the item. However, when we first launch a product, we simply don't require a full order of products. We must create a balance between ordering below MOQ while at the same time ordering enough units to be able to determine the exact quantity of units that our items will sell over a defined period of time. We also want to maximise our investment fund by ordering as many opportunities as possible. We must again temper this with how aggressive we want to be in our investment strategy. Now, I know you might feel a little overwhelmed trying to balance all this, but don't worry because I have some very simple rules that will help you make the best decisions possible and maximise your investment capital while staying as de-risked as possible. Let's begin by talking about maximising our investment fund. For the purpose of illustrating this for you, let's imagine that you have a budget of $5,000 that you've made available after determining how aggressive of an investor you want to be. Now let's imagine that the lead item, that is the first item that we want to purchase, costs $5 with an MOQ of 1,000 units. If we couldn't negotiate this MOQ down, then of course we're only able to get involved in one opportunity with that amount of capital. The key at this point is to see whether or not we can negotiate an order of 300 units. This would bring our investment down to just $1,500, which is 30% of MOQ. Now if we can do this, we may be able to free up enough capital to get involved in two or three more products at the same time. This gives us more opportunities to sell on Amazon and therefore more chance of increasing our investment capital that bit faster. This is the way you want to think, even as you grow your business. Try to order as little as you possibly can when first launching. Now this doesn't mean that you should cheap out when investing. No, we're focused on optimising our investing rather than saving. Maybe you're wondering how to keep your MOQ as low as possible. Well, the simplest way is to aim to negotiate 30% to 60% of the quoted MOQ from the supplier. In this way, you're generally going to be ordering enough units to get a feel for the market while reducing your risk. We are negotiating this reduced rate on the basis that we will return with a full MOQ once the item is validated in your market. You can let your supplier know that this is the reason your company works this way. Now, ordering this level of units may result in the cost of the product rising. If this happens, don't panic. It's simply the supplier's way of making enough on their end to justify producing the items. It shouldn't, however, increase the unit costs too much. You may then decide to calculate your profit based off the new price that the supplier gives to you. We would recommend that you don't do this. Why? Because this isn't the price that you will pay when you're buying this item once it's validated in the market. So always calculate profit based on the eventual cost price. Now you obviously want to do one calculation at the price the supplier gives you if you're lower than MOQ order to ensure that you're not losing money on this first order. You must also calculate the profit based on the price that you will sell the item for too. When you first launch the item, you might slightly reduce the price to get things moving along and that's 100% fine. But you must always think that you're going to sell the item at its correct price once it begins to get traction and that is the price to calculate your profit at. Again, avoid cutting your price so much that it makes the item lose money. A quick note on this strategy. I am not advocating giving away items for one dollar or for free. I am simply saying that it's fine to reduce the price a little to get things moving on Amazon. For instance, let's say the price you want to sell at is $24.99. To launch the item, you could start it at $19.99. It's reduced and will make your offer very attractive. Once sales start coming in, you start stepping up the price until you reach the ultimate price of $24.99. I'm now going to give you some tactics to use when negotiating that will help you get your orders placed below MOQ. Your goal is to always work on building a long-term relationship with your supplier. This relationship is the most important one to maintain. Why? Because they fuel your business. Simple as that. So what are some of the tactics at your disposal if your supplier isn't enthusiastic about your reduced order? 
The first tactic is to offer to pay an increased cost up front for the item in the case that they don't offer this to you. This helps your supplier see that you're reasonable and realistic and simply want to protect your investment. It also shows that you understand they too have to be able to make a profit on every order you place with them. This is a very effective strategy that you regularly employ. Secondly, you can pay a small order charge to help offset your reduced order. Your supplier may offer this before you need to. Next, you can let them know that you're happy with minimising packaging requirements. In other words, you're happy to keep packaging as plain as possible. There's no need for overly designed packaging that costs money and time to print and generally is only worth doing if you order at MOQ. Finally, you can offer better payment terms to the supplier. In other words, you can simply pay upfront instead of the usual payment terms of 30% deposit and 70% upon production completion. I'll go into this in more detail in the next module. Now, don't offer to pay more right away. Only use these if your supplier doesn't agree initially to a trial order.